All right, welcome to DTLT today. Uh, as you can see, we're still a little bit in transition, but at least we have the cuddle couch back. Yesterday, uh, we were moving things around, and this was not available, so we okay. pulled it. We pulled it out just for you, Zach. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I feel comfortable. Uh, we have Zach Whalen here today. Zach, you're an associate professor of English. Assistant here. professor. Assistant associate. <laughs> do, do these titles really matter? A they do, bit. in fact. Yeah. Little, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The assistant professor of English at Mary Washington, yeah. and uh, you teach some really cool courses. I gotta say, I just uh, met you this past May, but uh, you, uh, you've been doing some really cool things. I was looking at yeah. your biography, and it looks like your dissertation was on video games and typography, specifically in video games. Tell me a little bit about that first, and then we'll talk about what you're doing in your courses. Okay, sure. Yeah, my my research area is video game studies or game game studies and typography specifically. Uh, my dissertation took a an approach grounded in textual studies to to studying video game typography and um, studied the history of it. Looked at some uh, created some tools to analyze it uh, using um, some search patterns to look through ROM data for interesting typographical features and um, basically I ended up writing a kind of grammatology uh, like a a history of video games as a writing technology and wow. I, I think I came up with some cool stuff um, but then uh, I ended up I tried an experiment with it uh, with the dissertation itself to publish it online and uh, I mean I, I made it open it's openly available this is for a, free the video game text.com yeah the video game text.com yeah I used a Drupal uh, site to set it up and and my goal was to publish it serially like update it every now and then and I, you know it was fun to work on uh, I didn't get a lot of I guess traffic to it, but it's okay. You know, I got a few hits and that a few contacts. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I got like probably three or four people that were looking for that kind of thing, like the question of, you know, what about typography and video games? And mm -hmm. they found that site, and that, you know, so we've had uh, had some contact that way. So you have some other ideas for the project. So you're too, an English so. professor, but clearly you've got a little bit of a coding background. You're making websites in uh, Drupal. The, your dissertation, you built some custom programs. Yeah, I just I play around. You play around. I don't have any I don't have any formal anything. Not willing to but, commit to that. <laughs> no, no, yeah, but I mean yeah. some of these things are easy to I, I mean the resources are there and they're they're built in uh, you know open source software as much as possible. I use Drupal um, which is you know can can kind of be a bear to work with, but it's it's pretty well documented and if you if you're patient with it, it can do pretty well and then So you're one of the uh, last holdouts on campus that hasn't uh, flipped over to WordPress. I you know I like WordPress for what it is. I think it's very uh, you know it's it's good at it's good at content, right? I mean it's good at taking. I have an idea. I want to put it on the web. Put it in WordPress. You know right. that that's I, I tell that to students all the time. But when you want to, um, Drupal's a bit more flexible in terms of yeah, yeah, super flexible and and, and you can use types it, of content and that kind of thing. Right, the custom content thing, um, and then relationships between contents. Uh, th this semester I'm shifting into trying to use Drupal and Canvas alongside each other I mean yeah. that's that's really been a bit of a challenge Can, but canvas for you, those who are watching is our replacement for blackboard we finally right. got away from blackboard and right. we're using in structure canvas uh, which as far as I know it's working pretty well it is I mean it, it's, it's done what I need to basically I had been using just Drupal and I had Drupal doing a grade book as students creating different assignments and different assignment types I could create different relationships between different things they make like here's you know one student makes uh, content type in draft form. Other students post peer reviews of it, and that they're all linked together, so they can see them uh, easily. Um, I've built bibliography stuff in there, so I mean, I really like, um, you know, I really like Drupal for that. I mean, yeah. Whenever I approach building a site, I sort of approach it through the lens of Drupal. How would I do this with Drupal? Yeah. And I've done. I feel like I've done some pretty but fun you, things with it. But now I'm just using it mainly for a con as a content platform, and then using letting Canvas do the hard stuff. Like, like I just I. I got to the point last semester where I was spending all this time debugging my gradebook stuff in Drupal, and I was like, right. "This isn't my job. <laughs> I should sure. let Canvas or something else do that hard, you know, that hard work um, right. for me." And then 
focus on the teaching. So. But what I like, yeah. you, you don't really, you don't stick to the LMS as a way to manage your entire course. You're doing the gradebook right. and stuff, but you've actually yeah. jumped outside of that to do some interesting things. I want to talk about what you're doing in your courses right now. And I was sort of plugging away on Twitter when I found out that you actually you have a um, writing through media class this um, semester, mm -hmm. and you've actually get, you're you, having them sign up for Reddit accounts and go on Reddit.com, yeah. and there's actually a whole subreddit where they're posting stuff. Tell me more about that. Okay, yeah, sure. Well, the idea started. Um, well, I, I've taught this class three times now. Last semester, I did it all entirely in a Drupal site, and um, I've been really I've been interested in Drupal. So, I mean, in Reddit. So. I tried a similar model on that with just within Drupal, where students could um, uh, recognize work by other students that was good, <laughs> basically taking the upvote concept from uh, from Reddit, and uh, I, that worked pretty well. Except that I didn't build in a downvote system, and I didn't do any of the other complex stuff that the algorithm does for Reddit, where uh, new content is sorted near the top and old content goes to the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't do anything like that because it was just too hard. And, but but it, it did let me feature good work and that was the idea. Was that students, they sort of make the choice to put their work into the system and then other students recognize it and they, they kind of get a reward, you know, that there's an incentive for doing that. So I'm just trying that with Reddit and kind of like my shift to using um, Canvas, you know, I'm going to let Reddit itself do the Reddit-like thing. Mm -hmm. And so I made a subreddit for it and uh, now, part we'll of, goes. Now, yeah. and I saw on the syllabus, part of their grade is actually tied to something called karma on right. Reddit. How does yeah. that work? Um, well, karma on Reddit is basically the, um, like, you get you, you submit links and then you get upvotes or downvotes, and if you get more upvotes than downvotes, you get more karma. Gotcha. So it's like your karma score is basically your upvotes minus your downvotes. Okay. So you want to get people, so, so there's an incentive to create work that other people like. Right. right. And so... That challenge is what I'm hoping my students will figure out is actually a rhetorical challenge. Like, mm -hmm. how do you figure out what your audience expects and how do you, how do you, and meet those needs? Uh, yeah, because it's interesting. And, and, and it's not always really the quality of the work itself no, that yeah. shoots up on Reddit. It's more you right. know, internet memes and things right. like that. It's, it's, it's whatever. jokes or it's yeah, sure. and, and that's you know, I kind of I told them that I told my class that I felt that there's there there is still some that are, are kind of waiting to buy in at this point. Um, because I think they're sort of self-conscious about their work that they're putting out there. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting looking at our subreddit. It is. It has started to become that, like inside jokes from class, even really? or uh, you know, jokes, uh, meme references, and things that that the normal Reddit is full of. Yeah. Um, is getting them them yeah. some upvotes, yeah. and I don't know it's fun. Yeah. But the assignment is is a. Uh, it's it's the assignment. Assignment is called Karma. It basically, is a participation kind of component of the class. And right. If they get a hundred, I mean, the goal right now is, and I may change this if it proves to be too hard to get to, but a hundred karma points is a hundred on the assignment. Yeah, hundred out of hundred points. So. Has anyone gone like viral yet, or been more successful than <laughs> others in terms? Of well, the the ones that are successful, are the ones that already have been using Reddit and kind of have gotten used to how that works. They know uh, they know how the game's played in that respect. Right, and it is a game. I think that's yeah. what I hope they realize um, that there's a way to game it and. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure if they, they'll realize this or not, but I mean, among the class, we've got thirty something students, and if they all upvote each other's work all the time, they'll all pretty quickly get to the max score. So they could game this collectively, and yeah. I think that would be great. They haven't, <laughs> you know, they, right? But they haven't yet. Uh, I don't know. I think I was just checking. I think the most, the highest so far is about twenty seven, twenty eight in yeah. terms of karma. So, and, and a lot are just at one or two. Um, so they've got a long way to go. Well, it's it's a really interesting concept. Uh, have, yeah, we'll see. Are you doing anything else in your other classes that's similar or? Um, not so much. Uh, not with Reddit, uh, anyway. As far as engagement, I'm doing. I've been really um, having fun tinkering with uh, if this then that. Uh, have you played with that? I have. Yeah. So it's if t t t yeah. dot com. Yeah. So it basically, it reminds me a little bit of Yahoo Pipes. Yeah. But it's more easy. like user friendly. Yeah. What yeah. kind of things are you doing with that? I'm, uh, well, I'm, I'm working on some, uh, for my my senior seminar I'm teaching. Um, I have us using. Uh, I mean, I've been using personally, and, and I'm encouraging them to use as well. Uh, Delicious and Digo and Twitter, of course, and blogging and Zotero. So all of those generate RSS feeds. If this then that picks up all of that and then um, tweets that through a specific a Twitter account I've set up for the class. Uh, uh, robot human robot, uh, and he he'll. he'll 
basically he watches everything we do and then tweets it back to us. So, right. so like for a student who has never used Delicious or, or whatever, they may not think of how to check that or they, they may not know how to sort of put that into their daily stream of information, but they just follow the Twitter account and they can get that. Right. I have some other ideas for robot, human, robot. Uh, that I don't know if it's going to work, but I have some, I don't want to reveal it if it's not going to work, but I have some, I have some ideas where I might be able to use if then that to give him some, some more personality, basically. So we've got so. noise professor has been putting a couple questions out here. And one in oh. particular, I like he is what about like this idea of the hive mind and the negative connotation of people like downvoting others work. And yeah. That kind I mean, of that's something, that well, the, uh, I talked about this with a class and yeah, I mean the the Reddit community at large can be very negative. There's mm -hmm. some very dark, pla very dark corners of Reddit, and I, I, <laughs> I just I didn't tell them what those were or how to find them. But, right. Uh, you know, and, and so we had a conversation in the class, and I put it to them: Do we want to have our content only be in this subreddit, or do we want to open it up and, and let you post anywhere? Uh, the subreddit is currently set up so only we can post in it. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody can read it, but only we can post in it. Um, and to be clear, that but, I mean everybody can see that stuff in yeah. there but they can't actually post within this little group. Right, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I think the hive mind does create a risk in the sense that if, um, you know, any particular group of Redditors or, or just the general Reddit community decides that this class is a bad idea and they want to sort of raid my subreddit and downvote it to oblivion, mm -hmm. you know, that could happen. I, I mean, I told my students that this is a, an experiment yeah. and so we'll see, and I'll, I'll protect them if that ends up being the case that I'll, I'll just, I'll, what would, think be really cool, cool, and what would I think be really be cool fun. would be the opposite too. Like if yeah, somebody, if sure. they were able to get to the front page, say, "We have this course, and my professor is going to give us all A's if you go there right yeah. now and upvote everything." Yeah, and and you know, that may seem kind of sneaky, but I, I still think that would be great. And in the sense, it would be buying into the the platform, and that, yeah. that's really what I wanted to think about is how this platform creates these uh, things. So. so Michelle says she feels protected. So that's good. That's the student. That's the <laughs> I student assume that's there. Michelle from the class. Yeah. Gotcha. So okay. glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, I mean, our, at least our subreddit feels like a bubble. It feels like it's a safe place to post. And mm -hmm. um, we do have people visiting and commenting that are not part of the class. And that's, you? you know, that's cool too. Yeah. So far. That is cool. Um, I just discovered before, right before here, there, there's a UMW specific subreddit. It's just Reddit or UMW and some of them have discovered us. So. Yeah. Uh, is there a lot of activity on that one as well? Not really. Not really. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, there's like, I think there's two or three moderators that are pretty active. That's about it. Yeah. Well, um, we'll keep oh, the, taking anybody's questions. The question is uh, where it is, I think. Oh, yeah, yes, Reddit, so slash R. R slash writing through media, no spaces. or Writing through media. And I'll, and I'll post the link media. on the website with this video when we're done. So, yeah, definitely. Well, that's very cool. What else are you doing? I saw you had a graphic novel class, but this yeah. might be out of date. I don't know. Is that, of course, you're teaching right yeah, now? Yeah, I'm teaching graphic novel. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's fairly straightforward, I guess. I guess uh, students are blogging. Uh, the major project I've done for that class in the past has been a uh, uh, two major projects for that class, a web comic uh, that they work on in groups and then published on uh, WordPress. Which is interesting so, to me because it's like, you know, as an English class, that seems like very artistic. Do you find that the yeah, students who come well, into it have a lot of artistic background or are they just curious? About I do get a lot of students who are artists and that's great if they are, but I'm not an artist and I can't really evaluate art. I mean, I, <laughs> I, mean, I, I can, but I, I don't in this class. It's, uh -huh. So it's more about storytelling and narrative. Yeah. So, you know, I get some comics that are produced entirely with, you know, clip art or something along those lines. And that's, that's fine as far as I'm concerned. Right. And as far as the webcomic, uh, some of the goals I set up for it are, um, of course, build a narrative, create characters, um, but also, you know, find an audience for this. Reach out, you know, uh, mm -hmm. create a Twitter account and follow comic artists, uh, you know, put it on Facebook, do whatever, and try to yeah. see if you can get some traffic. I give them access to analytics and have them students get them plugged into ds106 and then they'll get all kinds of traffic there you go yeah we're all about the art well yeah we'll put it out there <laughs> uh, the other project to do for that is a collaborative book where um the groups each curate a chapter of content and write essays and then um, edit each other's work and then that, that project i'm actually rethinking because it was just so much logistic overhead to mm -hmm. manage who was supposed to be editing who uh, i did all that through drupal um using the book module um but this time I'm going to take a slightly different approach where like a lot of the students that come to this class, I get really good blog writing in this class and mm -hmm. it seems to be the case this time as well. So this time the book is going to be curate blog content that's already been produced, kind of like, I guess kind of like the anthologized model. But right. let's take, you know, select 
some really good blog entries that you've written and then curate that into a, some kind of coherent book-like structure uh -huh. um, and then peer edit that. Now, so, so when you say so you, you were using Drupal for that, they were actually doing the editing within Drupal or yeah. do you, you ever had used like Google Docs interface or anything like that? I think some not? groups did individually, but yeah, I'm just using um, Drupal like uh, with the book module, you post a note as content and then you can set it up to essentially have um, a wiki style editing. Anybody can edit it okay. and then um, you can compare versions very, pretty easily and then mm -hmm. post comments on them. So yeah. you get the same kind of feedback. Um, it's a little bit clunkier than like a media wiki for editing, but yeah. I like well, it. Does you know, and it's all plugged straight you're, into. You're not account, talking so. to a big fan of MediaWiki. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm not. I'm not a fan either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that's but, cool. If people want to follow what you're doing, you're on Twitter, Zach Whalen. Mm -hmm. So Z A C H W H A L E N. I'm trying to see. Question from Michelle: How does your graphic novel class differ from Tweety's? If you know, do you know Tweety? I do know Tweety. Yes. Okay. Uh, Tweety also teaches it. He usually teaches the 386. That's the 300 level. He usually teaches that version over the summer. I think that's just his preference. Uh -huh. um, he also teaches a freshman seminar in graphic novels. Um, his approach, I think just in terms of the text he selects, he knows a lot more about, uh, he's, he's a big Marvel fan, so mm -hmm. he's, he signs a lot of Marvel stuff. Um, I, I tend to go more towards alt comics and um, unusual things or experimental things, or, but ultimately it comes down to just stuff I like, and right. it's different than stuff he likes. Um, he's not going to have a. He's not going to do much with web comics. Probably he's not. He's not really into those. But I tend to be. So yeah. Uh, Noise professor is interested in what your take would be on unwitting AR narratives, and he posted a YouTube video, but we can't watch. It. I don't know what that is. <laughs> AR like augmented reality. Yeah, are you talking about like an augmented reality game type thing, noise professor? I don't know. Sometimes don't the know. chat gets a little crazy. Well, I, I, I mean, the other AR that I know of is like alternate reality games, like ARTs. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's something I, I teach a class on as well. I don't know oh, that's, that's right. Are about. you teaching one currently, or did you in the past? I have in the past. Um, what kind of things did you do for that? Uh, the uh, study um, transmedia storytelling. I, I'm actually changing that course around it to be more specifically about args. Uh, I was also about virtual worlds and args as a kind of virtual world right um which i think is maybe not the approach i want to take in the future like i, I feel like virtual world stuff is not it's just a different enough question that it needs to be looked at on its own and I, I i found i didn't get much sort of traction with mm -hmm. second life uh so now do you have them create their own or do you usually like have them participate in one or not yeah for the arg class yeah they had to Working groups, they follow a particular ARG campaign. The, the, I mean, the hard thing about studying ARGs is they aren't archived or intact. Right. It's not like you can go, okay, everybody go play, you know, the yeah. Beast. I mean, you can you almost have to time beast, it right can, to be what's with going ARGs, on. Yeah, yeah, so groups would kind of, you know, watch out for emerging ones and try to catch a live one, basically, mm -hmm. and follow it. And so a lot of those didn't go anywhere. Or they ended up being kind of not that great campaigns to follow, but that yeah. becomes a teachable thing as well. And then uh, then, yeah, the final project for the semester, the class collaboratively builds an ARG and runs it. So we've done two of those. Wow. And, you know, <laughs> that's it's, all, that's it's a crazy. lot to do it in that semester, really both participate and create one on your own. It is, yeah. That's why I'm going to make that, that more like that's all, pretty much all we do next yeah. time around. Um, I'm going to re... It, it's just the way that the paperwork and stuff works. I'm not going to be able to do it again until the fall, next fall. Yeah. So. We'll keep us updated. I'm excited yeah, totally. about that kind of stuff. So... Uh, we can follow you on Twitter, Zach Whalen. You blog? No? Yes? Sometimes? Not really. Not I really. <laughs> I have a website, ZachWhalen.net. ZachWhalen.net. I thought about blogging the other day, but then I didn't. Yeah. So. Right. Well, now <laughs> so you'll feel the pressure to post something because a ton of people are going to go there. Oh, or, at least, right. or at least a handful of them. So okay. thanks, hey, Zach, thanks for being on. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, and thank you all for watching. See you later.